What's up guys, Josh here from BlenderBros.com and in this video we're going to be going to the Blender Help Forum. We're going to take a look at some of the posts. Uh, this is inspired by a recent channel that I found where he basically goes to the Blender Help Forum and just makes jokes out of it. I'll put it on the screen right now. It's uh, actually pretty funny, but we're going to go in here and see if it's actually that bad. So let's just uh, hop right into it. <laughs> this guy says, can I save my topology or do I have to start over? This has got to be a joke. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if this guy's serious because I've seen worse for sure. Um, if this guy is serious, the, the only saving grace here would be to use a limited dissolve and that would basically uh, dissolve out all the redundant edges, but I don't even know what the hell this thing is, so... I'm going to go, <laughs> this guy said, Jesus fucking Christ, that is something. <laughs> that's uh, basically what I'm thinking. So uh, yeah, I'm going to assume that's a joke, but you're going to probably want to restart that if that is not a joke. All right, this guy says, how can I make the edge of the axe look sharp? I assume this guy's a beginner, so I'm going to actually give him some valid advice. You could either go in here and use, you know, a simple bevel modifier. That would be totally fine. If you're going for a sub D workflow, obviously this end gone on the side is not going to work well unless you use like creasing. But um, in that case, you would use a sub D with proximity loops on either side. But probably just a bevel modifier here uh, would be, you know, more than enough. And it's already sharp as it is. I don't know what he's trying to create. If this is like a game asset, you could probably just leave it as is. Again, it depends what you're trying to create. All right, let's keep going through here. Um, <laughs> maybe this guy's videos were, were onto something. Um, this guy says, hello, I just need what I assume to be a simple tip. How would I extrude these faces so that they extrude evenly in their respective normals? So outward from the center. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and open blender. We're gonna I'll just show you how to do that All right, so basically we're gonna go in here. We're gonna add in a cylinder I'll just put this to like 16 vertices something like that maybe 32 we'll scale this down a bit and We'll just do um Something like this is fine So basically what you do want to do is you want to go in here You want to select all the faces that you want to extrude out um, you can try if you want to like quickly, you know, speed up this process. You can go to Shift G and try some of these different settings, and it'll, you know, eventually know um, which area to select. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, face regions, maybe. Uh, it doesn't seem to be, you know, selecting the right ones in this case. So you could always go in here, box select this area, and then you would go to Checker Deselect. You go to selected two and deselected two, that would work as well. And then basically you can go to E to extrude, right click, and then Alt S. That will scale along the normals. Now you wanna make sure uh, for what this guy's asking here. Um, basically what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you turn on the offset even feature. Alternatively, you can actually go in, press Alt E to extrude um, faces along normals that way and that's uh, you turn on offset even I assume that's what this guy is trying to do uh, So hopefully that answers the question. All right, this guy says need help with a model first I'm totally new to blender and I need to Round out the edge is basically what he's asking. He wants to create this shape Which is literally a scaled cube with a bevel guys I don't understand why people like get into Blender without watching a few tutorials first. If you're making something so basic, you're wasting all your time and energy posting on the help forum instead of getting the right foundation first. You can watch some YouTube tutorials, you can watch some beginner modeling tutorials. This should not even be a post at all. And I know some people are gonna see this video and think I'm being an asshole and being disrespectful to beginners, but guys, like you have to value your time if you're making a basic post like this which is literally a completely beginner question you haven't established the right foundations to actually uh, learn blender you should not be posting on the blender help forum if you don't even know how to use blender this is a again like this is literally what this guy wants to do he wants to add in a cube and he wants to literally bevel these edges 
It's like a two second process. If you've seen any of my videos before, you would know how to do this within two minutes. So if you guys are new to Blender or you're doing something that's you know beginner focused, you don't need to waste your time posting this, screenshotting the Blender scene, waiting five hours for a reply. It just doesn't make any sense. Go and learn the basics and then when you need more help, then you can use a forum like this. If you want our help with that, if you wanna learn hard surface modeling in under two weeks very quickly, grab our accelerator course, it's in the description below. This will get you up to speed with Blender and hard surface modeling very, very quickly. Here's all the student results, more than I can fit on the screen. This is the go-to hard surface modeling course for learning Blender, and this is a promise. You will learn the entire hard surface modeling workflow in under two weeks. This is literally what's going to happen if you follow our curriculum. It's very quick, it's very efficient, and it's also very easy. So if you wanna learn that and just have the problem solved permanently, I'll link that program in the description. All right, this guy asks here, can someone teach me how to use Blender? I've been trying to learn to use Blender for months, but I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Either it just keeps glitching out because I can barely do a square without it letting me summon one state of the trenches right now <laughs> this is a rough post good lord guys like just go to youtube you have all the solutions you need why are you posting on the blender help forum asking for somebody to teach you like why is somebody going to go out of their way spend all their time during the day to teach you blender because you can't be bothered to watch a tutorial i don't get it this guy um <laughs> Plug in the blender, prepare your ingredients. Yeah, this is basically the reply this guy should be getting. It's funny. All right, guys, I hope you're ready for this one here. This guy says, how do I make this not kill my PC? And what we have is a super decimated rat here. I don't even know how we got to this point. I don't want to know how we got to this point, but um, you're uh, basically going to be stuck. You're going to want to redo this project. This is an absolute mess. I don't even know how this happened. <laughs> This is how I feel, this sub, I swear. <laughs> you know, to be fair, um, you could probably retopologize this with like quadri mesh or something. I don't know what, like, how this looks in object mode, I have no idea, but um, it could potentially be saved, but this is just, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. I don't know what the hell is happening here. This guy says, how should I try to make a shape like this? And we have a super pixelated shoe from the 1980s, probably from one of those old Tomb Raider games. Like, what is going on here? Like, you would think this forum is like a meme, but it's actually not a meme. Go to it for yourself. This is all public information. Here's the full image. Let's take a look at the full image. What in the fuck? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm gonna move to the next post. Why is it look like this with subdivision surface? Subdivision with a T. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here. So this is the mesh and this is the screenshot here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the comments first. There is some topology issue going on. Unmerged vertices or maybe interfaces incorrect could be welded edges or vertices also incorrect uh, check for normals and unconnected mesh also incorrect certainly this guy's certain about it certainly double vertices or open edges also incorrect guys if you're going to go to the blender help forum expect to get very very terrible advice because this guy's a top one percent commenter so you'd think there'd be some credibility here yet this guy is, is completely incorrect as to what's going on i'm going to go ahead and go into blender and actually show you the uh the problem here all right so this is basically what this guy has here in the post it's like uh more or less this shape so basically this is it's, it's almost the same thing. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna copy his setup, okay? So if we go back to the post, he has a bevel modifier and he also has a subdivision surface modifier. Now, the only time you'd ever wanna use a bevel modifier with a sub D after it is if you're using the bevel to get natural edge loops to kind of hold the edges together with the sub D. Not to mention, it wouldn't even work here because this guy has a segment count of one. I'm gonna try to mimic this here. We're gonna go to add modifier, we're gonna go to generate, bevel, and you're gonna see we have a one segment count with an angle of 30. That is also what he has here in his screen. Then we're gonna go here to the subdivision surface modifier. We're gonna add that in two levels, and we're gonna get a very similar result to what, uh, to what he has here, more or less. 
Now, all the comments were completely incorrect. I'm going to show you what's actually happening, okay? So first of all, if we go into wireframe mode here, you're going to see we have a bevel modifier and the angle is 30. When I turn this on, it only bevels part of this mesh. And that's because eventually these edges don't get captured by the 30 degree angle here. So you're going to kind of see, um, you know, this edge right here isn't getting captured. So, you know, if this was like smoother, a more round bevel, it would probably get captured. But in this case, you would actually have to go in here and adjust the angle and it'll eventually capture, you know, the areas you want, but then it's going to capture other areas you don't want. It's just a mess here and this is not the correct way to do it. So let's put this back to 30. Basically now with this bevel, we have just a, you know, a complete mess going on. It's just, uh, this is basically the result we're getting. And then when we add the sub D, right, it's just going to collapse on itself because we have some triangles here. I don't know if we have any angles going on, but it's just not going to subdivide very well. And it's just going to collapse on itself. If I turn off optimal display, you can kind of see, you know, what's happening here. It's just collapsing on itself. Now, if I added in a few edges, maybe it would hold better, but I still, you know, wouldn't even recommend this approach. Most likely what this guy is trying to do here, let me just turn these off, is he's trying to use a sub D workflow. Now, in this case, you would just want to use a sub D modifier and then, you know, tighten these up just like this. Just very basic beginner stuff. I don't know what he's trying to create, but this is the reason this is happening. All these comments in here, are completely incorrect they have no clue what they're talking about and that's unfortunately the blender help forum it seems guys i would honestly avoid this forum there doesn't seem to be i mean there's some useful stuff i looked at this before recording this video there is some useful stuff and i'm not saying it's all bad i'm not saying people are out to get you or to you know hurt you at all it's just the fact that you're going to have the blind leading the blind and if you want to learn blender efficiently you don't want to get bad information you want to get the correct information so i wouldn't use the blender help forum you guys can go to our discord we have 7,000 people on there that is free alternatively you can grab our accelerator course which is going to get you very good hard surface modeling very quickly in under two weeks that is a promise again here are all the student results here it's not me just saying that this is backed by tons and tons of proof all right this guy here asks why does the default modeling texture stretch or appear a different shade when i extrude let's take a look at the photo so this is the mesh here and this is the object mode i assume the only reason this would happen is if you have like a inverted normal i don't think that's the case in this screenshot but you could always select everything press shift n that'll recalculate it most likely what's going on here is simply like a just a viewport type of render so if we go in and you can kind of see like on this cube for example it gets darker on this side based on my positioning that's just a natural effect of the viewport there's nothing wrong with that um, so this is not really a problem all right this guy says how do I fix this shape and he has a head with a sub D modifier and he says in the comments here I want to know how to make the geometric shapes align with the model skin you either need to I'll show you, you either need to guys this is like very basic stuff. I really, really encourage you guys, if you're new to Blender, watch a beginner's tutorial, get the basics down, and then when you have questions, then make those posts. But basically, if we were to go in here and run a sub D, if we go into edit mode, it's still gonna have the cage here. Now what you can do is you can click on this button to you know kind of adjust it this way, but if you want physical access to the geometry, what you actually need to do here is um, you would need to apply the sub D. Then when you apply that, now that's destructive. You can't really undo that unless you save the scene beforehand. But now you can kind of see we have access to the geometry here. So that's um, basically how you do that. All right, this guy here is doing the donut tutorial. He says, why is this happening? For some reason, when I select the icing and try to move it to the other side, that gets moved as well. I assume this guy's a beginner, so fair enough. Basically, if you're trying to move something with proportional editing, you, well, first of all, this guy has all these random vertices on the other side selected, and that's just moving things as is. Proportional editing is going to affect stuff around the mesh within that radius of influence. And also, if you have other vertices selected, those are going to get moved as well. So for example, if I were to go in here and I'll just use this sphere I just made a bit ago, you know, let's say I go in and I duplicate this and then we'll solidify it gonna go to solidify just like that and if I wanted to you know kind of move this around 
I would need to use proportional editing. So if I go to the O key, I can move that around. But say I had, you know, vertices back here selected by accident, even though, you know, this radius might be smaller, it's still going to kind of move these areas back here. So you need to make sure you would deselect that area and only influence the area you actually want to move here. So that's most likely this guy's problem. All right, this guy here says problem slash question I ran into for the donut tutorial. I've reached part three, and for some reason when I turn on the subdivision surface modifier, the squares in the icing don't increase. Is this a problem? And if so, how do I fix it? Looks like he has a sub D here and then has like a uh, solidify right here. It's actually working as intended, but you can't see it because he doesn't have that cage setting turned on. So it's actually subdividing fine. It's just using the... Um, low poly outline in edit mode so i already showed you how to do that earlier in this video also the order of modifiers matters for example solidify before sub d will give you a different solution than sub d before solidify i think i said that right let me go ahead and just show you what i mean all right so right here i have this um piece on the top of the sphere i'm going to go ahead i'm going to put a sub d just on the main one and what i'm going to do on this guy is i'm going to add a solidify modifier and then after that, I'm going to uh, just run a sub D, so control two. So basically what's happening here is we first have the solidify and then we have the sub D just like that. So it's going to thicken it first and then run the sub D on that thick geometry like that. Now, if I were to flip this, if sub D goes first, we're going to get a different solution. And the reason for that is that it's first going to smooth out this flat object here. It's going to smooth that out first and then it's going to solidify that smoothed out geometry. So very, very different results. Modifier stack order matters a lot and uh, you need to make sure you have that, you know, on point. All right, I'm going to end the video here, guys. Again, if you're learning Blender, you should not be wasting a bunch of time on these help forums. What you should be doing instead is getting the right information, learning from the right courses or the right tutorials, whatever you choose to do. And then once you have the basics down, then I think it's okay to make posts like this. But if you're a complete beginner, you need to have the right foundation down first. There's no other way around that. And if you need our help with that personally, you can check out our Hard Surface Accelerator program in the link in the description below. Thousands of students have went through it. They're getting results very, very quickly and you can as well. So thanks for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.